The Psychologist's Code of Ethical Conduct. This is a brief summary of important Australian Psychological Society or APS Code of Conduct, which was adopted by the Psychology Board of Australia in 2007. Disclaimer: I'll only be talking about some things that I find、um, ethically important. Basically, I'm not going to talk about every single.、Uh, Code of ethical conduct. Clients are defined as party or parties who use psychological services in the context of supervision, teaching, professional practice, and research. Clients can include individuals, couples, families, groups, organizations, and communities. Conduct. This is any act or omission by psychologists. Psychologists are required to conduct themselves ethically throughout every aspect of their life, as to not cast public distrust. Into this profession, multiple relationships. This occurs when psychologists have a non-professional relationship with the client, which produces a conflict of interest. They need to set boundaries, and there are ethical problems if, let's say, you are the only psychologist in a small town, and everyone has a non-professional relationship with you, since everyone knows you in the town. So yeah, you have to consider the、um, the impact of.、Uh, Multiple relationships, and yeah, try and set boundaries when deemed appropriate. General principle A of the APS:、uh, This includes respect for the rights and dignities of people. One needs to seek conduct that promotes equity, respect, and protection of human rights, and preserve the dignity of all peoples. A one justice. This is any form of discrimination that is prohibited. A two is respect, whereby conduct must not be perceived as demeaning or coercive by clients. A three is about informed consent, whereby psychologists need to inform clients in what psychological services one intends to provide, and this must be conveyed using clear language and consider the capacity of an individual to consent. So, for example,、uh, children. Cannot consent because they do not have the capacity to grasp、um, what consent is or what exactly is being done. A four privacy. This is the collection of、uh, relevant information only, and psychologists must not have any undue invasion on a client's privacy. A five is confidentiality, whereby a psychologist must safeguard private information, but psychologists. Are also obligated to disclose information due to mandatory reporting if life and safety are threatened. A six is the release of information to clients, whereby psychologists need to write client files, knowing that they will one day be read by the clients themselves. Documentation must not have conjecture, but be based on objective evidence, and psychologists must conform to professional, legislative, and organizational requirements. B. Propriety. B two is about record keeping. Psychologists must have adequate records that are to be kept for seven years. For clients under eighteen, records must be kept until twenty five. Clients have the right to amend inaccurate information in their records. B three, professional responsibility. Psychologists, in dealing with their services, need to be responsible, relating to providing care, accounting for foreseeable consequences of their conduct, and this must be reasonable and maintain personal responsibility for professional decisions. B five provision of psychological services to multiple clients. For example, therapy for those divorced. Psychologists need to explain in advance the limits of confidentiality. Give clients to consider the limits of the situation and not be coerced to accept these limitations. B six delegation of provisional tasks. Delegates can read and code for the psychologist, but they must be competent and have no relationship with clients to reduce conflict of interest. Delegates also need to be supervised to ensure competence. B seven use of interpreters. B eight collaborating with others for the benefit of clients. Cooperation with other professionals helps to provide second opinions and can provide effectual service to clients. B eleven 
termination of psychological services. Well-being is paramount and if clients no longer need these services, psychologists are obligated to terminate the services. Tests, however, cannot be made public because psychological tests work when people remain ignorant about it or then you can't really test personality or intelligence etc. if individuals have seen the tests and practiced it before. B14 Research Data collection must be accurate, must be made available on request, complying with ARC, NHMRC and Universities Australia research codes. Previous publication data must be stated clearly and referenced. C. Integrity. Psychologists must maintain their reputation and that of the profession. Psychologists must not have sexual relations with their clients. The rule is two years after terminating professional relationships with the former client, but it should be never. Extreme boundary violations. Basically, don't have sex with your clients. Clients who have had sexual relations with counsellors reported feeling guilty, unstable, having a loss of trust, suppressed rage, isolated, identity disturbances and increased suicide risk. Counsellors who violate boundaries are usually middle-aged men going through a midlife crisis, having marital problems of their own and who disclose their own problems to their clients to attract their sympathy. C1. Reputable behaviour. Don't bring the self or profession into disrepute. C2. Communication. Communication needs to be honest, correcting for any misconceptions, misrepresentations or mistakes. One must follow guidelines for advertising and portray professional qualifications accurately. C3. Conflict of interest. One needs to avoid multiple relationships which I have mentioned prior hand, which can lead to harm or exploitation of clients. Individuals need to follow a free or informed consent. If multiple relationships are unavoidable, and need to declare to clients vested interests in psychological services that are to be delivered. C4. Non-exploitation. Psychologists shouldn't exploit or coerce others. C6. Financial arrangement. Need to be honest and clearly state how much needs to be paid. You can't be charged for referrals. So in conclusion, we looked at the Psychologist Code of Ethical Conduct, which was adopted by the Psychology Board of Australia in 2007 regarding uh, the Australian Psychological Society Code of Conduct. It dictates how one interacts with clients, how one conducts themselves, multiple relationships. We also looked at general principle A, justice, respect, informed consent, privacy, confidentiality, release of information to clients, propriety, record keeping, professional responsibility, provision of psychological services to multiple clients, delegation of professional tasks, the use of interpreters, uh, collaborating with others for the benefit of clients, termination of psychological services, research, integrity, extreme boundary violations, reputable behavior, communication, conflict of interest, non-exploitation, and finally, financial agreement arrangement. Thanks for watching.